call to order. Adequate notice of this meeting was provided and published in the Asbury Park Press on January 9, 2015. Copies of the agenda were provided to the newspapers posted on public bulletin boards in the township website. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilman Moore. Here. Councilwoman Zapsek. Here. Councilwoman Lidecker. Councilman Fosman. Here. Councilwoman Ponterero. Here. Vice President DeYoung. Here. President Mumolo. Here. Uh, at this time, everyone, please silence your cell phones or turn them off. I'd like to call up Boy Scout Troops uh, 16 and 17 to lead us off in a Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Everyone, please rise. Thank you. Accept the reports of your municipal officers. Please file those reports. Yes, Madam thank Clerk. you. Approval of minutes of June 9, 2015 uh, meeting. Can I get a motion and a second? Motion. Second. second. Motion by Councilwoman Ponterero, second by Councilwoman Zaptek. Zapsik, sorry about that. Roll call, please. Councilman Moore. Yes. Councilwoman Zapsik. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Ponterero. Yes. Vice President DeYoung. Yes. President Mumolo. Yes. A uh, four one is the municipal budget adoption. Authorized four one is authorized the reading of the budget for, by short tile title. Call for a motion. Motion. Well, I'd like the mayor first to speak before we do anything. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just everybody, the Sandy, Sandy's impact on our budget this year is $5,766,730 or 5.62 cents on the tax rate, meaning our taxes would go up 5.62 cents just because of Sandy if we didn't uh, have uh, different reductions in different areas uh, mm -hmm. as well as different income in different areas. Um, but this year our tax increase was only 1.9 9 cents and I just want to make some comparisons. The budget is down $1.87 million from the 2013 budget. Uh, in the four years since the majority changed, the tax levy has um, increased $2.3 million, or about, that's about $500,000 a year, a little bit more. Um, and when you compare that to the four years prior, the tax levy had increased $25,564,069 which is over $6 million a year. Um, and so it's a big difference between $25,564,000 and $2.3 million. That's the difference in tax increases over the four years prior to the majority changing the four years since. Um, and again, my, this budget here is down $1.87 million from the last one that I had control over, which is the 2013 as, control over as mayor. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Call for a motion and a second to adopt a resolution authorizing the reading of the budget by short title. Motion. Second. Mo motion by Councilwoman Ponterero, second by Vice President DeYoung. Roll call, please. Councilman Moore. Yes. Councilwoman Zapsik. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Ponterero. Yes. Vice President DeYoung. Yes. President Mumolo. Yes. 4 2 authorized state required budget amendment resolution. Mr. President, I have a resolution to present at this time amending the 2015 municipal budget. Madam Clerk, would you read that budget, please? Sure. Resolution, please. Whereas the local municipal budget for the year 2015 was approved on the 17th day of March 2015, whereas the public hearing of said budget has been held as advertised, and whereas the Township Council of the Township of Brick desires to amend the introduced and approved budget, and now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Brick, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, that the following amendments to the approved 2015 budget be made. Summary of current funds section of approved budget. General appropriation for appropriations within CAPS, municipal purposes, items H1, sheet 19, NJS 40A4 through 45.2. 
from $66,990,041 to $67,749,899. Appropriations excluded from CAPS, Municipal Purposes, Items H2, Sheet 28, NJS 40A 4 through 45.3 as amended from $22,892,009.32 to $22,295,150.07. Total general appropriations excluded from CAPS, item O, sheet 29. From $22,892,009.32 to $22,295,150.07. Reserve for uncollected taxes, item M, sheet 29, based on estimated percent of tax collections from 95.84% to 96.21%. Per percent of tax collections from 9,035,000 to 8,334,640. Total general appropriations, item 9, sheet 29 from $98,917,050.32 to $98,379,689.07. Less anticipated revenues other than current property tax, item five, sheet 11, i.e. surplus miscellaneous revenue and receipts from delinquents taxes. From $29,055,725.32 to $28,518,364.14. Difference, amount to be raised by taxes for support of municipal budget as follows. Local tax for municipal purposes, including reserve for uncollected taxes, item 6A, sheet 11. From $69,861,325 to $69,861,324.93. General revenues, surplus anticipated, from $10,086,637 to $9,994,637. Total surplus anticipated, from $10,086,637 to $9,994,637. Miscellaneous revenues, section E, special items of general revenue anticipated with prior written consent of the Director of Local Government Services additional revenue offset with appropriations, NJSA 40A colon 4 through 45.3H. EMS services from 1,450,000 to 1,542,000. Total section E, special item of general revenue anticipated with prior written consent of Director of Local Government Services, additional revenues from 1,450,000 to 1,542,000. Miscellaneous revenues, section F, special items of general revenue anticipated with prior written consent of Director of Local Government Services, public and private revenues offset with appropriations. Federal Highway Safety Grant from zero to $41,400,000. Ocean County Pump Out Boat from zero to $40,000. Total section F, special items of general revenue anticipated with writ prior written consent of the Director of Local Government Services, public and private revenues from $338,096.32 to $419,496.32. Miscellaneous revenues, section G, special items of general appropriation anticipated with prior written consent of Director of Local Government Services, other special items, essential services grant, from $2,812,500 to $2,134,230.75. Total section G, special items of general revenue anticipated with prior written consent of Director of Local Government Services. Other special items from $5,149,860 to $4,471,590.75. Summary of revenues, surplus anticipated, sheet four, number one, from $10,086,637 to $9,994,637. Miscellaneous revenues, total section E, special items of revenue anticipated with prior written consent of the Director of Local Government Services, additional revenues offset with appropriations from $1,450,000 to $1,542,000. Total section F, 
special items of general revenue anticipated with prior written consent of Director of Local Government Services, public and private revenues offset with appropriations from $338,096.32 to $419,496.32. Total Section G, special items of general revenue anticipated with prior written consent of the <coughs> Director of Local Government Services, other special items from $5,149,860 $149 to $4,471,590.75. Total miscellaneous revenues from $16,015,020.32 to $15,510,151.07. Receipt from delinquent taxes from $2,954,068.32 dollars to three million thirteen thousand five hundred seventy six dollars and seven cents subtotal general appropriations items one two three and four from twenty nine million fifty five thousand seven hundred and twenty five dollars and thirty two cents to twenty eight million five hundred eighteen thousand three hundred sixty four dollars and fourteen cents amount to be raised by taxes for support of municipal budget Local tax for municipal purposes, including reserve for uncollected taxes, from $69,861,325 to $69,861,324.93. Total amount to be raised by taxes for support of municipal budget, from $69,861,325 to $69,861,324.93. Total general appropriations from $98,917,050.32 to $98,379,689.07. General appropriations, operations within CAPS, solid waste collection, salary and wages from $3,656,294 to $4,195,344. <coughs> Building and grounds, other expenses from $590,545 to $640,045. Vehicle maintenance, salary and wages from $680,861 to $820,169. Maintenance of parks, other expenses from $124,650 to $134,650. Total appropriations, item HA within CAPS, from $59,043,288 to $59,781,146. Total appropriations, including contingent within CAPS, $59,043,288 to $59,781,146. Details, salary and wages. From $32,341,226 to $33,019,584. Other expenses, including contingent, from $26,702,062 to $26,761,562. Deferred charges and statutory expenditures municipal within CAPS, statutory expenditures, contrib contribution to public employees retirement system. <coughs> from $1,756,000 to $1,778,000. Total deferred charges and statutory expenditures municipal within CAPS from $7,946,753 to $7,968,753. Total general appropriations for municipal purposes within CAPS from $66,990,000 thousand forty one dollars to sixty seven thousand seven hundred forty nine and eight hundred ninety nine dollars appropriations excluded from caps additional appropriations offset by revenues njs 40 a four through forty five point three h vehicle maintenance essential services grant salary and wages from one hundred thirty nine thousand two hundred nineteen dollars to zero sanitation essential services grant salary and wages from eight hundred and two thousand $406 to $263,355.75. Total additional appropriations offset by revenues, NJS 40A 4 through 45.3H from 
$380,551 to $3,702,281.75. Public and private programs offset by revenue. Federal Highway Safety Grant from zero to $41,400. Ocean County Pump Out Boat from zero to $40,000. Total public and private programs offset by revenue from $338,096.32 to $419,496.32. Total appropriations excluded from caps from $4,817,000 $430.32 to $4,220,561.07. Detail salary and wages from $4,087,000 to $3,408,730.75. Other expenses from $730,430.32 to $811,830.32. Capital improvements excluded from CAPS. Fund un Fund un funded ordinance 72-93, 858-96, and 1094-03 from $260,912 to zero. Total capital improvements excluded from CAPS from $710,912 to $450,000. Deferred charges municipal excluded from CAPS. Deferred charges. Fund unfunded ordinance 792 93, 858 96, 1094-03, and 1109-04 from 0 to $260,922. Total deferred charges municipal excluded from CAPS from $3,643,000 to $3,905,000. I mean $3,905,922. Total general appropriations for municipal purposes excluded from CAPS from $22,892,009.32 to $22,295,150.07. Total general appropriations excluded from CAPS from $22,892,009.32 to $22,295,150.07. Subtotal general appropriations items H, 1, and O from $89,882,050.32 to $90,045,049.07. Reserve for, un for uncollected taxes from $9,035,000 to $8,334,640. Total general appropriations from $98,917,050, $9,017,050. And fifty dollars and thirty-two cents to ninety million three hundred seventy-nine thousand six hundred eighty-nine dollars and seven cents. Summary of appropriations: Total general appropriations for municipal purposes within caps from sixty-six million nine hundred ninety thousand dollars forty-one dollars to sixty-seven million seven hundred forty-nine thousand eight hundred ninety-nine dollars. Operations excluded from caps. Additional appropriations offset by revenue. From four million three hundred eighty thousand five hundred fifty-one dollars to three million seven hundred two thousand two hundred eighty-one dollars and seventy-five cents, public and private programs offset by revenues from three hundred thirty-eight thousand ninety-six dollars and thirty-two cents to four thousand four hundred nineteen thousand four hundred ninety-six dollars and thirty-two cents. <coughs> total appropriate uh, total operations excluded from caps from four million eight hundred seventeen thousand four hundred thirty dollars and thirty-two cents to $4,220,561.07. Capital improvements from $710,912 to $450,000. Total deferred charges, sheet 28 only, from $3,645,000 to $3,905,922. Reserve for uncollected taxes from $9,035,000 to $8,334,640. Total general appropriations from $98,917,050.32 to $98,379,689.07. Be it further resolved that two certified copies of this resolution will be filed with the Office of the Director of Local Government Services for certification of the 2015 budget so amended. 
be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be forwarded to the business administrator, chief financial officer, and purchasing agent. Thank you, Madam. Yeah. Great Ooh. job. <laughs> Very good well job. Done. Well done. <laughs> a lot of numbers. A lot of numbers. I have a motion and a second to. Uh, uh, Mr. President, I make a motion for the adoption of this resolution. Thank you. Okay. Second. <laughs> uh, motion made by Councilwoman Pontarero, second by Councilwoman Zapstick. Roll call, please. Councilman Moore. Yes. Councilwoman Zapstick. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Pontarero. Yes. Vice President DeYoung. Yes. President Mumolo. Yes. This Thank resolution you. is adopted. Uh, four three, adopt 2015 municipal budget as amended. Mr. President, I request that the clerk be instructed to read, sorry, limit <laughs> the resolution adopting the budget as amended. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please yeah, read sure. the resolution? Of call. course. Be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Brick County of Ocean that the budget here before set forth is hereby adopted and shall constitute an appropriation for the purpose stated of the sums therein set forth as appropriations and authorization of the amount of Sixty-nine million eight hundred sixty-one thousand three hundred twenty-four dollars and ninety-three cents. Item two below for municipal purposes and one million twenty-six thousand two hundred and sixty dollars open space <coughs> recreation farmland and historic preservation trust fund levy. Summary of revenues: general revenues surplus anticipated nine million nine hundred ninety-four thousand six hundred thirty-seven dollars. Miscellaneous revenues anticipated fifteen million five hundred and ten thousand one hundred fifty-one dollars and seven cents. Receipts from delinquent taxes, $3,013,576.07. Amount to be raised for taxation for municipal purposes, item 6A, sheet 11, $69,861,324.93. Total revenues, $98,379,689.07. Summary of appropriations, general appropriations within CAPS, A and B, operations including contingent, $67,749,899. Deferred charges and statutory expenditures, municipal, zero. Cash deficit, zero. Excluded from CAPS, operations, total operations excluded from CAPS, $4,220,561.07. Capital improvements, $450,000. Municipal debt service, $13,711,000. $13,711,667. Deferred charges municipal, $3,905,922. Judgment, zero. <coughs> Transfer to Board of Ed, education, zero. Cash deficit, zero. Reserve for uncollected taxes, $8,334,640. Total appropriations, $98,379,689.07. Thank you, Madam Clark, great mm -hmm. job. I get a motion to adopt the for adoption of this resolution. Motion. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Pontarero, second by Councilwoman Zapsick. Roll call, please. Councilman Moore. Yes. Councilwoman Zapsick. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Pontarero. Yes. Vice President DeYoung. Yes. President Mumolo. Yes. <coughs> Thank you. 2015 Brick Township Municipal Budget has been adopted as amended. All right, let's move on to the consent agenda. All matters listed under item consent agenda will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. If discussion is desired on any item, this item may be removed from consent agenda and will be considered separately. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Resolution 5-1, recognize Brick Township Rotary Club for a bulletproof uh, fund, bullet, bulletproof fund, bulletproof vest fundraiser. Sorry about that, starting off bad. See, good thing I didn't read all those numbers. Forget it. 5-2, uh, resolution 5-2, authorize award of proposal fair and open process architectural service pool. This resolution approves the award of professional architectural service pool proposals to architectural design associates Point Pleasant Beach, Barlow and as Barlow and Associates Brick, Turkowski and Millennium Brick, DMR Architects, Hasbrook, Hasbrook Heights. This pool will be in effect through December 31st of this year. 
Resolution 5-3, also authorize award of proposal fair and open process property appraisal and property inspection service. This resolution approves the award for professional property appraisal and property inspection service to Henry J. Mancini and Associates, Manahawkin, and, uh, and Value Research Group, Livingston. This pool will be in effect through December 31st this, uh, of this year. Resolution 5-4, authorize award of proposal fair and open process, bid, process bond council. Resolution approves the award for professional services for bond council till Wilentz, Goldman, and Spitzer, Woodbridge. This appointment will be in effect through December 31st of uh, this year. Resolution 5-5, authorize award of proposal fair and open process financial advisor. This resolution approves the award of professional services for a financial advisor to Northwest Financial Group Hoboken. This pool will be in effect through December 31st of this year. Resolution uh, 5 6, authorize award of bid, Angela Hibbert Park Improvements. Mayor? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we are doing Angela Hibbert Park this year. Uh, at last um, council meeting, it was pulled off the agenda. The reason why is because there was originally engineering <laughs> estimates uh, from our engineer, uh, outside engineer TM. And they had estimated about $705,000 for the park, uh, which we were excited with because we thought that would be a great price. Um, unfortunately, they made um, miscalculations. They didn't calculate sod correctly, the price of sod, and some irrigation and some other things. Um, so when the bids came back from the actual contractors, and there was a number of contractors that bid on it, I don't remember if it was seven, seven or eight, um, that bid on the park, they were all... Uh, we're going with the lowest bidder tonight, but the lowest bidder tonight is precise construction for a base bid of $949,045 uh, with an alternate number one of $15,675 for a total bid amount of $964,720. So when we first got those back, we were like, wow, that's a lot more than the seven hundred and five that our expert said it was going to be. So we want to take another look at it. We figured out where the differences were. It was an irrigation. It was inside. He just made all sorts of errors. Uh, and this is the real price. This is the lowest bidder. And just so everybody knows, the scope of work includes installation of sidewalks, a basketball court, tennis court, uh, with a pickleball court, a, the dog park for lar large dogs, the dark dog park for small dogs, uh, safety surface. Uh, obviously, then you have to do the regular stuff like drainage and landscaping, site amenities, and of course the play new brand new playground area uh, for both little kids and bigger kids. Um, and um, you know, it's going to be a great park, and it's the second one of our three that we're able to do this year. And this is part of, you know, this part of the, um, basically my, my uh, debt reduction plan. Uh, and we're still able to do great things for the town, such as parks. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, five, seven, authorize award a bid through HGAC by National Cooperative, one 2016 ambulance. This resolution authorizes the award uh, a bid for a 2016 Type 1 F 4x2 ambulance through the HGAC by National Cooperative, who is awarded to the contract to PL Custom Body and Equipment Manistwan. <coughs> the total cost of the purchase uh, and delivery is $164,881. Resolution 5-8, authorize award a bid, purchase, and delivery of two powered ambulance stretchers. The resolution authorized the award a bid for two powered ambulance stretchers to Stryker EMS Portage, Michigan, in the amount of $15,608 per stretcher. Resolution 5-9, authorize award a bid, 2014 uh, paving program, Lake Riviera, Lake Riviera resurfacing phase two. Mayor? Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, the debt reduction plan was something uh, very important to me because I believe that we just had too much debt in town. Um, I just want to let you know that uh, in the four-year debt reduction plan, which are the four years that I would be mayor, it's reduced the township debt as of this date, 5436955 and it's looking to further reduce the debt by at least another 8947000 by December 31st of 2017. Uh, despite that, we're still able to do road projects such as this one. Uh, at, in Lake Riviera, and it's being awarded to Earl Asphalt of Farmingdale, and again, it's the lowest bidder, to include the base bid and alternates. The total amount is $1,015,413.13, and the following roads are being done. Essex Drive, Georgia Drive, Heritage Drive, Pine Tree Drive, Oklahoma Drive, 
Virginia Drive, and Texas Drive. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution 510 authorizing uh, to rescind bid mobile food vendor at Windward Beach. The resolution authorizes the, the request by Cool Concessions um, Rec to rescind their bid and request for the bid amount of $525 to be refunded. Cool Concessions submitted the bid for mobile food vendor at Windward Beach. However, they did not comply with the bid specifications and they have not signed contracts and we were unable to obtain general liability insurance requirements. Resolution 511 authorizing to reject proposals, community development planning and housing rehabilitation services. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we like to do an evaluation of whether things work better in-house or out of house and uh, how to save the taxpayers money by doing that. With this particular position, the community development planning and housing rehabilitation services, uh, we've, we did uh, go out to bid and we received two bids uh, but after careful review, uh, the township has decided we're going to reject the, the, the proposals that were submitted uh, because we have determined that we can bring these services in-house, which is going to provide more than $100,000 savings annually. It's not only for next year or for this year, it's for years ongoing. And uh, we're going to be doing it in-house. We don't have to hire anybody extra. Our current personnel are handling it. And uh, therefore, we're uh, asking the council to reject the bids. Thank you. Uh, 512 uh, authorize addition to alternate conflict public defender pool resolution authorizes an addition of Matthew Hagen from the firm of Hagen Pagano and Associates to the alternate and conflict defender pool resolution uh, 513 I'm so used to say in fours but uh, 513 mm -hmm. authorize execution of interlocal service agreement with the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office for administration to the automated license plate recognition server this resolution authorizes execution of an interlocal service agreement with the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office for the administration of the automatic license plate recognition server. The agreement is being signed at no cost to the township, and at this agreement, the county hosts the data and shares that information as needed with the police departments across the county and eventually hope to, uh, to make it statewide database. Uh, resolution 514, authorize placement of tax liens on property cleanups. Resolution authorizes the placement of tax liens at the following properties which require debris removal and or overall cleanup uh, by the Department of Public Works. First is 70 Venice Drive, Lot 210.33, Lot 27 in the amount of $124.54. Second is uh, 581 Drum Point Road, Lot 287, Lot 18 in the amount of $64.90. Third is 31 Glenmere Drive, block 869.38, lot one in the amount of $48.62. Fourth is 550, 557 California Avenue, block 1406.05, lot 15 in the amount of $64.90. A fifth is 587 North Lakeshore Drive, block 446.20, lot nine in the amount of $80.47. And final is 253 Circle Drive, block 323.23, lot 16, in the amount of $48.62. Resolution 515, authorized special event permit, Civil War encampment. This resolution authorizes a special event permit for the Brick Township Historical Society to hold a Civil War encampment at Havens Homestead Museum on Herbertsville Road from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on August 7th. 8 and 9. Resolution uh, 517, authorize 2015-16 uh, uh, plenary retail consumption liquor license renewals with restrictions. This resolution authorizes plenary retail consumption liquor license renewals with restrictions to Applebee's Bonefish Grill, Jack and Mike's Brickhouse Bar and Grill, Buffalo Wild Wings Bar and Grill, Carabas Italian Grill, Famous Dave's, Houlihan's, Mansion on the Plaza, Maniloking Road Pub, Quaker Steak and Lube, Red Ramen Gourmet Burgers and Brews, and Tommy's Coal Fire Pizza. Resolution 518, Bond Reduction Releases. Madam Clerk. Thank you. This resolution will authorize the release of the $395.11 remaining in the Engineering Inspection Fund for William M. Frank for Block 
838 lot 22 off Tilford Boulevard. And I also wanted to just point out that you skipped item number 5-16. Oh, yes. yes, I did miss 16. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go back to that. Seven, I read 16, I didn't read, did I read, miss 16 or 17? 16. 16. I missed 16, I hate when that happens. 516 authorized uh, 2015, I thought I read them off, but I guess I didn't. No. I you know what it is, I read 17, 17 for 16. Yeah. So I apologize for that. Let's start that all over again. Uh, authorized, uh, two, 516 authorized 2015, 16 liquor license renewals without restrictions consumption. Uh, this resolution authorized liquor license renewals without restrictions, plenary retail consumption license, retail plenary distribution licenses, and club licenses. The applicants are qualified to be licensed according to statutory, regulatory, and local <coughs> governments, ABC laws, and regulations. Okay, that's the one I missed. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. We are now at 519. Um, tax collector. Uh, I'd like to ask our business administrator. Certainly, 19A, 100% DAV refund and cancel taxes for block 400.09, lot 5, 423 Arc Lane in the amount of $5.28. 19B, issue duplicate tax sale certificate for block 321.16, lot 8, at the property owner's request. 19C, tax overpayments for 2006. Block 44.18, lot 8, in the amount of $18.03. And block 673.11, lot 12.01 in the amount of $8.79. 19D, tax overpayments 2007. Block 124, lot 4.04 .04, in the amount of $6.68. Block 190.05, lot 14 in the amount of $191.75. Block 1429.02, lot 2C0830 in the amount of $56.01. Block 757, lot 1C0305, in the amount of $672.22. Thank you. I'll open to council. Any questions on the resolutions? Seeing no questions, close council. Uh, ask for a motion and a second. Motion. Second. Motion by Council Vice President DeYoung, second by Councilwoman Pacarero. I'll open to public for questions on any resolutions. Sir? Vic Vanelli, Meadow Point Drive. Um, first thing I just noticed, there's no section six on the agenda. Is that an error or is that something section. was taken off? Or? That was an error. Section an six. Error. An error? Uh, oh, on the top there, it doesn't say it, but yes. It should be 620. Well, six was taken, not, not on here, I mean. There's on, no on ordinances the, on first right. reading. No. It's yeah. just an error. My next question was, I thought on the agenda, and I might be wrong, there was, there was an item about a hydraulic boat trailer? Not, that was, no, that last, was last meeting. meeting. That was last meeting? You got yes. it. <laughs> okay, then I must have read the wrong one. Thank you. <laughs> this is Ju uh, July 21st, you yeah, have that yeah, one? No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I must have missed that. Uh, just a, a clarification on item six, what the mayor was talking about, Angela Hibbert Park, which is the one I drive by twice a day, it's in my neighborhood. And I read the article in the newspaper and everything, but I'm not certain of, was, was the estimates of the footage and everything too high? It's, I mean, the actuals were lower? No, it was too low. They, the, uh, the engineer's estimate was $705,000. Right. And then the bid came back at 949. Right. So now, what, what was the he, he thought turf was a lot cheaper than it, it really is, and. Uh, so he was off on the unit prices for different items. So when you take that as a multiplier by how many square feet you need, he there were there were three line items that were significantly short, um, and those were three tallied up with the difference between our current lowest bidder and the engineer's estimates. Okay, so where did the extra money going to come from then? You were thinking seven fifty, and they're talking over nine hundred. So you got a shortage of a couple hundred thousand dollars. Where is where well, that? We also from? have uh, one point one million coming from Green Acres. We put in for the multi park project. So we put in a, for a grant application for Angela Hibbert and Lake Riviera and Colorado, the other parks that we're doing this year. So the one point one million, uh, we will take the difference from that grant. And the rest we will use to pay down the debt on the other parks. Well, it's going to a good park in my neighborhood. My question <laughs> is, as long as you're happy. Well, Mr. Fosman <laughs> says that all the time about his park. Yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, is there any years. recourse when, when one of the companies that we use makes a screw up like that? I mean, uh, what do we normally do? <laughs> Well, th there's a there's a construction <laughs> um, component to this. So usually you have the the engineer does the estimate, and then almost always use the same engineer to do the construction and the admin construction administration, and th it's not going to be this particular firm. Oh, okay. So there is something. Somebody gets a slap in the hand or something, and they screw up. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And thank you. Anyone else on a resolution? Seeing none, close public. Can I have roll call, please? Councilman Moore. Yes. Councilwoman Zapsik. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Pontarero. Yes. Vice President DeYoung. Yes. President Mumolo. Yes. Uh, bill resolution computer 2015. <laughs> <coughs> be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Brick that the following bills be paid and that the Mayor and Clerk be and are hereby authorized to draw orders on the Treasurer for the amounts of the same. Computer, computer bill resolution in the amount of $1,107,273.11. Thank you. I'll open to Council. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, close Council. Motion and a second, please. Motion. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Pantarero, second by Councilwoman Zapsik. Open to public. Seeing no questions, close public. Roll call, please. Councilman Moore. I'm staying on 15-01701. Uh, That's uh, page 11. If council members need to, <laughs> <laughs> to, need to address on that. that one. <laughs> and yes to the rest. Councilwoman Zapsik. I'm staying on New Jersey Press Media and yes to the rest. Councilman Fosman. I'm staying on the MUA and yes to the rest. Councilwoman Pontarero. I'm sorry, Councilman Moore, which one are you objecting to? Page 11, which section? 15-01701. Uh, second from the bottom. Page 11. Page 11. Oh. Thank you. I understand. Yes. Thank you. Vice President DeYoung? Yes. President Mumolo? Yes. <coughs> Bill Resolution Manual, 2015. Be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Brick that the following bills be paid and that the Mayor and Clerk be and are hereby authorized to draw orders on the Treasurer for the amounts of the same. Manual Bill Resolution in the amount of $1,580,378.92. Thank you. Open to Council. Mm -mm. No questions from Council. Close Council. Open to the public. No questions from public. Roll call, please. Uh, motion and a second. Please. Make a motion. Okay. Second. Motion by Councilman Fosman, second by Vice President DeYoung. Roll call, please. Councilman Moore. Abstain, Township Payroll. Yes to the rest. Councilwoman Zapsik. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Pontarero. Yes. Vice President DeYoung. Yes. President Mumolo. Yes. <clears throat> Seven one. These ordinances on second reading amend rezoning designation block nineteen uh, one thousand ninety one lot five. An ordinance of the Township of Brick County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, amending the zoning designation for property designated as block ten ninety one lot five on the zoning map of the Township of Brick. Thank you. This ordinance amends the zoning designation of block ten ninety one lot five located at the intersection of Van Zyl Road and Route eighty eight East and it is bordered by Old Squan Road. The parcel in this location is of St. Dominic's Catholic Church, and after review and discussion with our land use committee, it has been determined that the property is more appropriately designed within B2 zone based on the current use of the property, adjacent uses, and the roadway frontage of the existing property configuration. Motion and a second. Motion. Second. second. Well, motion by Councilwoman Pontarero and second by Councilman Fosman. Open to the public. Ma'am. Man call 18 Greenbrier Boulevard. Is that the, the property that was at one time a service station, gas station? No, no, this is actually St. Dominic's Church. Okay. This is actually the okay. church property. Just yep. making sure that okay. it wasn't the contaminated land. No. Thank you. Anyone else from public? Seeing none, close public. Roll call. Councilman Moore. Yes. Councilwoman Zapsic. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Pontarero. Yes. Vice President DeYoung. Yes. President Mumolo. Yes. 
Seven to amend chapter 396, stormwater management. An ordinance of the Township of Breck County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, amending and supplementing the Township Code, chapter 396, entitled stormwater management. Thank you. This ordinance addresses our stormwater management that already exists in the sanitary sewer section of our code. The ordinance will move the language from sanitary sewer section into the stormwater ordinance. We have also amended the ordinance to include the definition of MS4 and conveyance OR system of conveyances, including <coughs> roads with drainage systems, municipal streets, catch basins, curbs, gutters, ditches, man-made channels, and storm drains. The intent of these revisions is to address the storm drain retrofitting of public and private properties. Can I get a motion and a second, please? Motion. Second. Motion by Vice President DeYoung, second by Councilwoman Zapsik. Open to public. Yes, last time I checked, I'm still in Nancarl at 18 Greenbrier Boulevard. And I don't quite understand exactly what a storm water or storm drainage I come from that great state of Brooklyn, a state of mind, if nothing else. They have drainage there, too. And they have sewers that we call them in Brooklyn, and they are at curves. Um, you did mention public and private. Where I live, there are some, what I believe to be, storm drains. It has the grading like, the heavy metal grading like a sewer in Brooklyn and it's on private property. Is there somewhere that it says what happens with those on private property? Because when the engineer was out to my house many years ago, nobody knew about the, at least the one nearest my home that existed. The state is looking at, uh, the state's asked us to look at the storm drains. And it's, the county has uh, many of the storm drains are entering now into the bays, which is something that they want to get away from. But as far as private storm drains, I'm not sure exactly when they're put on private, who regulates that. But it would, if you're doing groundwater, it has to be, it has to be controlled by the, the state's going to have a say in where it goes. Well, the my storms, point is- They don't go into our storm system. They don't go, I mean, our sewer system. You mentioned it's a separate private <coughs> and private, public. Right, private properties too. And my well, this will keep it so that if private properties need that, that they have to f abide by the regulations to properly take care of the storm. My search for water. knowledge is there is what I think qualifies near my property. Nothing's going in it um, because the drainage has been compromised. Are you and when the township was out to examine the problems about lack of drainage on vast areas of the community, they didn't know about that. They said it wasn't on any map. So is somebody going to look into that and do whatever is necessary? We could ask our engineering to look into it. Alyssa could look into that for yeah, this, her. The particular scenario that um, Ms. Call is talking about has been discussed at length um, by our engineering department and continues to be discussed. It is a particular uh, issue. Um, this ordinance is not going to change any of the the dynamic right. it's 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 nope. simply taking it from one section of our code into another Moving section of right. our code as pointed out to us where it should be so it's not any new regulations it doesn't change any of the ways that we do business but when it talked about the public and private properties it talked about any retrofitting to our, our storm drain system would have to be done in compliance with current state guidelines so Correct. that that scenario I is think is not your possibly referring to the drainage problem. I'm referring to how you will know whether this particular storm sewer, I'll call it, needs retrofitting or doesn't need it or what's what. I'm only referring to that particular item and the others on the <coughs> private property in my community. So I'm not referring to the drainage in general. But Ms. Call, Just all this all this ordinance is doing is moving it from one section to another. It's not do, <clears throat> changing anything else. No. Well, that's all this is it doing. It still says that when something needs to be done, like it and had, if you don't know it exists, who's going to know whether to examine if it needs retrofitting? 
That's my point. Okay. I leave it to you to uh, think about and consult me if you want more. All right. Thank you. Anyone else from public? Close public. Roll call, please. Councilman Moore. Yes. Councilwoman Zapsik. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Ponterero. Yes. Vice President DeYoung. Yes. President Mumolo. Yes. 7 3, amend chapter 5, uh, 352, sewers. An ordinance of the Township of Brick, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, entitled Sewers, to delete section 352 7 through section 352 25. Thank you. Uh, this is just moving the section that we just talked about and putting it into uh, Chapter 396 of Stormwater Management, taking it out of the sewer section. Um, a motion and a second? Motion. Second. second. Motion by Councilwoman Fontarero, second by Vice President DeYoung. Open to public. Seeing none, close public. Roll call, please. Councilman Moore. Yes. Councilwoman Zapsik. Yes. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Ponterero. Yes. Vice President DeYoung. Yes. President Mumolo. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll move on to public comments. Please note that each person addressing the council during any section of the meeting during which public comment is permitted shall limit her, his or her remarks to five minutes pursuant to Brick Township Administrative Code Section 2-33B. Thank you. Is there another folder? No, it's coming around after we oh, wrap okay. <clears throat> Council comments, who would like to be first? Public comments. Sorry. Public, sorry. Getting ahead of yourself. I guess, yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> rushing the meeting, sorry about that. Good evening. Uh, John Sluka, 950 Sylvia Court. Uh, here's my letter which you all got, I believe. Yes. Mayor John Ducey, Brick Township Council President, Paul Mumolo, all council, council members and concerned citizens of Brick. Uh, here we are again at another council meeting reminding all that very little has been done to stop the destruction of the environment around Brick Township and nothing can be done to reverse the harm to the health of the residents of Ocean County and the Brick residents in particular. A few trees in the area of Evergreen Woods is at least a welcome start but it's far from a legitimate answer to the future health risk of our children. A few trees in the area of Evergreen Wood, although a nice beginning, is not the answer to need to need it to a major health problem caused by New Jersey Turnpike Authority. A few trees in the area of Evergreen Woods was a nice token attempt to ease some of the problems brought about by the NJTA and its profiteering friends, but it will not give back the months and years of com comfortable and healthy living for our seniors. Yes, a few trees in the Evergreen Woods area are welcome change in the verbiage of the NJTA, but only a large pollution and sound barrier can alleviate, alleviate the p possible pain and suffering that future will bring to our residents. People have sent letters to the governor's office, the attorney general's office, state assembly, congressional offices, county executive, and various other representatives of the people. Although some seem to show concern or at times willing to listen, almost no one will address the issue with the powerful New Jersey Turnpike Authority and its lobbyists and supporters. Many newspapers and radio and television stations have, contact, have been contacted and some have given time and space to address the issues of the noise and pollution caused by the New Jersey Turnpike Authority, but only scan changes have taken place. The one group, which is our local government in BRIC, has at least made headway and helped coordinate some changes, but a local government cannot seem to push the, heavily, push the heavily connected NJTA into doing the right thing for the residents of Brick Township and the adjacent, adjacent areas of Monmouth County and Ocean County. The residents of the area still smell the fumes that are dumped upon them from the diesel exhaust of large trucks and the hundreds of thousands of, of autos daily. The lungs of residents are continually damaged by these toxins and our local government is just not powerful enough to push the NJTA into correcting the problem they have caused. It may take many phone calls and pleas from the mayor and the council to the governor and others who appoint these men to, to, who appoint these men to the executive post of the New Jersey Turnpike Authority, but something must be done. For nearly three years, the lives of residents have been impacted by the NJTA 
It's illegal action, but the NJTA still scoffs at the citizens. Because those political appointees know that they will receive their political rewards from the governor and not from ordinary middle and low income people or their local representatives, we need the help of the governor to have the NJTA correct the damage they have created and only continuous messaging by local government might be able to encourage the governor to speak to the NJTA on our behalf. Uh, that's the end of my letter. I just didn't, since I have a whole minute and a half, I'm only gonna take a few seconds. Uh, just wanna let you know, uh, I'm glad the budget went through the way it did. It was a small increase, and actually because of the NJTA, I actually got a 5% decrease this year, so everybody in Brick Township's paying for me and other residents around, in, around the Garden State Parkway who got the lower taxes due to a lower assessment value. So in the long run, it will hurt us all, but in the short run, it's hurting every resident because you're making up for the taxes I no longer have to pay caused by the Garden State Parkway or the NJTA. We should be suing them to get our tax money back instead of charging the other residents. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Public comment? Ma'am? Dan Paul again. I'm thinking about it. Thanking you all for coming to my meeting tonight. <laughs> you didn't move since the, you just got up. Are you still at 18 Greenbrier? I'm still at 18 okay. Greenbrier Boulevard. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> and I expect to go home to a swamp. Um, I have two plus. One is on page three of the readout that our town clerk did such a wonderful job on. And it has to do with the statutory expenditures, contribution to public employees retirement system. The contribution is being made by the township. Uh, I'll ask our business administrator to answer that one. And the money that you will be contributing comes from where? This is the year of that story I'm going to contribute to the public employees. Uh, I understand that. For, for the township itself has no money. Where does the money come from? Is well, it coming from the taxes that every one of us are paying? Yes. I just want that clearly understood because there are many. Uh, public employees who say, I pay into my retirement. Well, I paid into my retirement, but no tax money or anyone else. The corporation I worked for did. But in this case, I have to pay into the public employees' retirement as well as having paid into mine. The contribution is taken out of our paychecks and paid through that system. None of it is tax money. It's you only, I know that some money is taken from your paycheck, but I seriously doubt every penny that you're going to be getting as part of your retirement is paid for by the employee who gets it. That's not how it was where I worked. Of course, it was a while ago. We paid part, but the corporation paid more. So I doubt it comes from there. Please do check if I'm correct that some of it is really coming from tax money. Um, the other has to do with my statement two weeks ago about there's nothing to attract tourists here. And I'm sorry to differ from Councilwoman DeYoung's statement. Summerfest is not a tourist attraction. In fact, way back when the mayor was, oh yes, Joe Scarpelli. For a lot of people that were very angry that people who came for the summer and were in Point Pleasant and other nearby areas would come and enjoy our Summerfest that we, the township, were involved in paying for and frequently we, the township, had a difficult time to get in and park. That's not attracting tourists. Tourism is where they come, they stay in a hotel and uh, some rental quarters, spend their money in our town buying food, etc. So that brings me back to my half a comment. 
I'm going to start requesting again what I did back in the beginning of 2011 when the previous all Republican regime was in effect and that we go back to having a caucus meeting one time, one week, and the public meeting with at the caucus meeting, everything gets thrashed out like this. And anything you get to say on your comments, that the people go last, that you go first, and if we have something to dispute, we get to do it then and not have to wait two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from public? Ma'am? One of our uh, Pledge of Allegiance leaders, thank you. Good evening, I'm Mrs. Latchford. I'm the Eagle Scout advisor at Troop 17 here in Brick. This is an Eagle Scout candidate that we have been trying to get his permits for his project. I called the council secretary and I, she asked me to email. I did that, I have yet to hear. And the permit is stymied. We've got to do it this summer because he goes back to school. Thomas, tell them about your permit. Hello, my name is Thomas Townsinger. I'm an Eagle Scout candidate from Troop uh, 17. My project is I'm going to be uh, removing a walkway and part of a sidewalk in front of St. Thomas Lutheran Church, and then I'm going to be replacing it with a concrete, uh, concrete wheelchair ramp to go over in, well, into the entrance of the church. So um, I have I am requesting a waiver of all fees for any required permits to do so. I have already submitted my um, permit applications and got all the paperwork in, and now I just need um, to get my waiver for the fees on the permits. Okay, I, I know we're aware of this. Um, we've discussed this. Uh, would you like to address this, or should I just, it, it's a difficult situation. like to check into this and I'm uh, oh, happy to give the scout my card yep but I we did discuss it there's some legal issues of, of actually waiving permit fees it's it, we're not our, our council uh, president I'll good I'm, I'm sure we can work something out with the uh, Eagle Scout to make sure this gets done okay you know in accordance with his time frame if you would speak with um, Ms. Bergen who's a business administrator and we'll make sure we uh, um, get back to you shortly When, your, when was your projected start date? Projected start date? Um, well, as soon as I get my permit back, really. So okay. um, probably within the next few weeks. So you, you'd did, have to, I'm sure that if, if you're building a handicap ramp, it's going to have to be ADA compliant, I'm sure. Oh, okay. So our inspectors need to come out and make sure that it's being yes. constructed. So we have the federal standards for a handicap. <clears throat> we are abiding by the federal standards for the handicap ramp. Okay. Great. We'll look. We'll look into it. How long is the project anticipated to take to complete? Um, a few weekends, two or, or three. Um, well, one weekend for demolition, and then the inspection, and mm -hmm. then two weeks to rest from that demolition. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, of course the construction, at, or actually no, the filling in of uh, like the sub base, and then the inspection, and then of course the actual construction of the ramp. Great. Fellow scouts giving you hand ends? Oh, of course. I'm not doing this by myself. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I, I could hire you tomorrow. I have so much work for you to do. <laughs> That's heavy. That's hard work. That's good labor. That's very good, though. And congratulations on making it as far as you have. And I have every yep. assurance you're going to be an Eagle Scout. Thank you very much. Terrific. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who next from public? Ma'am? Good evening, Michelle Spector, Evergreen Woods. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, just, just a pretty much a recap of everything, I guess. In February of 2013, the New Jersey Turnpike Authority clear cut 100 feet of trees from the center meeting of the Garden State Parkway and 30 feet from the shoulders. The old forest separating an eight lane highway is gone forever. Our community of Evergreen Woods is now exposed to 65 to over 90 decibels, uh, even until morning. Our roofs shake every morning as if there's an earthquake. 
The roar of motorcycles speeding every night and trucks breaking keeps us awake into the wee hours of the morning. A huge basin adjacent to us installed purportedly for water quality, does everything but, was demanded by the uh, Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, they permitted and approved it themselves, ignoring their own policies and even uh, public law. Their policy remains unchallenged, except in court where it was shot down. Uh, DEP never inspected the basin site. NSPS, which is the non-structural point system, a computer program, determined need merely by plugging numbers into an Excel spreadsheet. With no public oversight required, this huge mud puddle was constructed at taxpayer expense, exorbitant expense, even though the, the, DE, the uh, Turnpike Authority had a test performed pruning the soil drained a foot an hour. It was totally unnecessary. Although a noise problem was confirmed, and this, of course, we now have the noise because the, the uh, barrier, natural barrier was taken down. Although a noise pro uh, problem was confirmed by a 2005 sound study, Turnpike Authority said the road wasn't being moved closer, therefore they're not adding volume, blah, blah, blah. So a new sound study, they said, wasn't essential. So we, of course, we did it ourselves to show that there was a problem. Uh, they came in a car to look at it, and they didn't even open the windows to hear anything or to talk to anybody. That was interesting. Uh, anyway, it was purely semantics because um, the road had already moved closer when the old highway authority used part of the shoulder to add an extra travel lane. Uh, big money squandered for no public benefit, communities harm, and the guilty parties aren't held accountable. <laughs> DEP subsumes authority where none exists, and uh, Turnpike Authority rubber stamps and funds it. It's just Jersey business as usual. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone from public? Sir? Can I go back to my boat trailer for a minute? Sure. I know what I did. I looked at the agenda Friday morning, and I must have looked at the other one before the new one was yeah. up. <laughs> I'm assuming that boat trailer, and I wasn't at the last meeting, so I'm assuming that boat trailer was for Traders Cove. Correct. It was at Traders Cove, and what happens is we have a travel lift there. The travel lift is 26 feet wide. Right. So when they bring in boats, they, they can't get boats close enough to each other. So with the uh, hydraulic trailer, we get about 40 more boats to be able to okay. put in that in the, in the storage area. So it'll pay for itself. We're waiting to see what the bids come in. We just went out to war, you know, we didn't award a bid, we just I, went out I, to, I understand and then we're going to look at and compare to see if, it, if it's going to okay. make sense. Was it seems talk, to make sense. Was there some talk of turning over the operation of Traders Cove to a private entity? Were we looking at that? Mayor? Uh, yes. Um, but this, this is our first actual summer where every single slip is rented. We have different personnel uh, working there. Rather than having kids, we have some older uh older gentlemen and, uh, and ladies uh, that are working there. Um, so we're just have, trying to get more responsibility and more grasp of exactly what we can bring in on our own so that we know if people are coming in to bid on it, what we can do on our own okay, so, so we can make a right this, comparison. This trail is going to pay for itself. Yes, rather, rather that's quickly, the goal. Depending of, on the price. If not, we don't want to, I, I personally don't want to spend any more money there. We have enough debt service on that. So that's why we're looking at this. And it came up and I asked for the response from a gentleman that runs the runs it and, and uh, recreation and, and that's the numbers that they gave me back. So we're waiting to see what this comes in at. Between 20 and 30,000 were, I think is what the hydraulic. I, I know what it does, I use them myself. Yeah. <laughs> I always wondered how everybody got that boat in their front yard on those cinder so blocks. So close. <laughs> right? The first time I saw a hydraulic boat lift. And I, or a helicopter or that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, did, ev did everybody see this article in Sunday's paper? I oh, did not. didn't, right? Did you leave the room? <laughs> no, I'm only uh -oh. kidding. I did not see that article. You did not. Okay. It's an article about the Asbury Park Press on Sunday, and, and, and the article basically says, are we being paid what we are worth? And it lists various salaries of different things all around the country. In fact, there's, there's a, we were kidding Mr. Pizarro's before. If you saw it, there's a mugshot of him in here with his salary underneath it. Mm -hmm. And he's right next to Kim Kardashian, who makes $28 million. <laughs> so that was a good matchup, right? <laughs> uh, and, and if you look at the paper and, and list uh, some of the things, one of the things that caught my eye is something that I've addressed before. And I don't have a lot of information, but I would like you people to get the information. And, and I've, I've talked before about the biggest part of the uh, uh, 
uh, budget being the police salaries, and, and this year they went up 800,000, which is about a 5.4% increase. And, and I don't know whether that's added better or not, but I'll read you some numbers and then I'll shut my mouth, all right? Because okay. my son said, don't go there in the first place, but I am, all right? It lists, it lists Detroit police officer, and this is the top base pay, right? Detroit police officer. I wouldn't want to work there no matter how much you pay me, but that's $53,000. If you look at a Philadelphia top base pay for a police officer, it's $64,000. I don't think I'd want to work there either. If you look at uh, NYPD, which has a very large police force, $76,000 is the salary. You know where I'm going with this? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you go down to Lake Como, it's 101000 and then Wall Township, 112000 And the last patrolman top base salary is brick at $122,000. Now, your first impression of looking at this article is we're probably be paying the highest police salary on the East Coast. That would be your first impression because nobody else is listed below that. Right. That's, that's the highest one. And maybe that's what they're trying to do. I don't know. I don't know if we're at a, at a base with, with other police departments and what we pay. Uh, I'm certainly not complaining about the, what the job that the police department does. But this is the biggest part of the budget. Um, the mayor talked about uh, what, what, what we're raising uh, from uh, tax levies this year in the, in the 60 million range, all right? This is 25% of that, 15, 15 million dollars, 25%. So what, what I would like to see you people do sometime in the future is really look and see if we are really on, on the very high end or out in the stratosphere with, with salaries on that. And if so, I realize it's all contractual. I was just going to say, it's all contractual. You you say it, it's all contractual. It is correct. Well, then, then, then if it's all contractual, you have to fix it, okay? And um, just the last thing, uh, I know today was the I'll be quick. I know today was uh, you, you finalized the budget, and I, I would like to see somehow that by the time you people finalize the budget, we have an actual tax bill in our hand, not an estimated one. And oh, by the way, I got the one from Mr. Bazaris, so thank you, with mine on it. And I also got the information from um, the tax assessor's office. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Uh, in dealing with the uh, tax people, they are the nicest, friendliest, most helpful people that I've ever dealt with. And uh, you know, it's not always on a nice basis. I mean, I didn't, I didn't get my, my uh, tax thing done. The lawyer had stopped it at the last minute. But they're always the nicest people to deal with. Very helpful. And by the way, I couldn't get all the information because I was using a lawyer. And some of the stuff has to go there. But I got mm -hmm. what I need to thank you. So yeah. they do a great job. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I think the reason for the estimated tax is we don't have the uh, central services grants. Not, nothing's finalized. That's why it takes a while for the budget. But we have to get that. That's great. We have to get the yeah. and, tax and, and, and as I told Joanne, that's not a battle that, that, that we can fight, but it is a battle that you might be able to fight in, in, in getting the state to do something or, you know, or maybe even just saving, saving money by having to send out those, those estimated tax bills, and then you have to send out the real one again. I mean, right. it, it would seem to me if you've got to have your budget done in, in March or April, why can't the state have their end of it done where by the time the third quarter rolls around, we actually get a <coughs> tax bill, that's not, a good not something question. that says you owe this much, pay it. Mm -hmm. That's the state. No. <laughs> That's a great question. Which, by the way, if I would like to go did, to the state you know? for us. Well, wait, if you want to go to the state for Mr. Pizarris, that would be hell appreciated, too. <laughs> What's that? Go into the state to fight for that, to make sure that everything gets done before uh, the end of March. He would love well, that. Well, yeah. it'd be great. like you say, though, as a public, we have no way of fighting that. As a town council, we, you, we you, go. You, He's you should have very, somebody's our, our administration is, is on top of it all the time. It's just, it takes a while for the state to make their minds up. There's a, the numbers that go back and forth are mind boggling. It, it, it really is. Mr. Mr. President, can I briefly address Mr. Finelli? Sure. Mr. Finelli, you're right. What we pay our police is the largest chunk of our budget. It's the, also the most important part of our budget. We're not going to have a town that is livable, livable and that you can li live in peace and enjoyment without the hard work of our police. They have, re they have 
Chief Berkowitz has cut his budget down to such streamlines at this point, bringing in special police, um, going through a lead and see program. He's even doing more, and, and the officers are doing more than a lot of other towns do. In my personal opinion, that's the most important part of our budget. It's what keeps us safe. It's what keeps us functioning as a community. It's how we can have Summerfest without one incident happening in the last three. It's so important. I, I understand where you're coming from saying, you know, I'm looking at the numbers. I'm looking at the community and I'm looking at the people and at my children. And I'm saying, I wish I could hire more, more officers. You see how many that we've escalated up to sergeant, lieutenant, it's due to their hard work. We have some of the finest officers that I could tell you that I've encountered, and I encounter a lot of police officers in the work that I do. We have people who are dedicated not just to their jobs, to their community, to helping the kids, to going out to Maple Leaf. I see Mr. Cancel in the back row who's gonna get up and talk about Maple Leaf again. I have my Chief Berkowitz here, he's sitting there, and he would tell you the same thing. He's cut almost every ounce of fat that there can be cut without sacrificing or compromising our safety and our ability to have great programs that we have and do it without running a risk of somebody getting hurt or worse. So that's just my personal opinion. But when you look at that budget, I see where you're coming from. I see where you're looking at the numbers. Mr. Finale, on this one, look beyond the numbers. Look at us. I don't disagree with anything you said. That's what I love to hear. Thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> However, I'm not what? sure you understood the point I was making. Oh, I understood the point it. The I, I was making is are we paying more than we have to pay to get those things? That, that's all I'm saying. Okay. Look at the look at the rest of the world. Look at what everybody else. I promise you, I'm going to look at it. I promise you. I promise you, I'm going to look at it. Yes. Save your comments. Thank you, Mr. Finelli. Okay. Thank you. Just don't don't get me wrong about how I feel about where I live or what the job they're doing. It has nothing to do with. It. Are we paying more than we need to? That's all I'm saying. And I don't know the answer to that. Look Thank you. It. Thank you. A anyone else from public? Sir. Uh, George Coyle, 10 College. I, I just had a question. Um, I don't go to the concerts anymore, but um, do they? Summerfest, correct? Summerfest, okay. yeah. Do they uh, address this buy and brick thing? Do they, do they mention it, the buy and brick program? Um, as far as address it, well, just to let people know about because a lot oh, of yes. people don't. The mayor does, we, we, well, vendors are there, but the mayor does mention the buy and brick. What, you have a concern? Do you remember the buy and brick? Do you? Yes, and I'm, okay. it, you know, just to, I know a lot of people aren't aware of it. And it's, it's, a, it's an educational process. It's, yeah, you know, so we're I, trying I to educate as much would, as we can. And since I don't go, I just figured I'd ask because I figured it's, it doesn't cost anything to no. dress it. You have a, no. Also, would there be a way maybe they could sign people up? Because I've given people these cards and then they, you know, people procrastinate, put them aside. Would there be any way they could sign people up maybe when they give them the card? Then they have the card and it's already good and they can use it. Because I've given a lot of people these cards. They have to go on the computer. They have they? to sign up. Yeah. yeah. But that's the problem. Mm -hmm. I give them and I said, did you, and they don't did sign you do up. it? No, I didn't do it. I put it. With somewhere and it's a shame because they're just losing out mm -hmm. it's a win-win it's a, win -win situation. It's a win for the merchant it's a win for the taxpayer yeah. but if people don't want to take advantage of it we can't force them to take advantage of it. that's the sad they yeah. should be taking advantage of it whether they get ten dollars back or a hundred dollars back or five hundred dollars back it's something back and it helps everybody and there was a letter in the third quarter property tax the estimated bill about the buy and brick program and you know if you used it you saw the line and I saw it but I know a lot of people they don't you know, they look for their taxes. I mean, I get emails from you because I'm a new Democrat, you know, yeah. which that's how I found out about mm -hmm. But I'm just saying a lot of people really don't know about it. A lot of people, you know, like I, I talk to merchants and they're unaware of like how it works. I'm trying to educate them. Yep. We, also, we also just did this uh, newsletter that went out to everybody and there was a full article on it explained uh, how the program works, how to sign up for it, I listed swear, every business. So we promote it everywhere we can. Yep. Has it and been someone in the administration also, or the town township worker's been going out to the businesses and explaining to the merchants and talking to them. And we've had, a, in the last four or five months, we've had probably 10 or 
12 new business new merchants sign up for the buy and brick program so we've been doing door to door well, one I've been able to get the affordable automobile I went there good mm -hmm. thank you the mechanic and the first time they didn't they don't know what it is no I, I explained it. to them oh yeah. they were afraid of yeah. well if I do an oil change for twenty dollars I may lose money on it so then the next time I went back I asked them well, why don't you ask one of the businesses that are in it and she called the business and they said phenomenal. Yeah. And then, sure enough, they went in. Yeah. So just to suggest that maybe if you were, this was its first year, someone. so it's a growing thing. But it's it's going to pick up steam because more and more people are finding out about it. You know, there's eighty thousand people. Well, how many cards go out? I don't know exactly how many people are signed up at this point. But it, well, I used it quite a bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> you got the most. I think I did. I the most <laughs> extra, two hundred forty-three dollars. One hundred and thirty. There you go. So yeah, we were using it. No, I, I used the, well the jewelry store. I you know for Christmas I used it. Yep. And what was nice too, the people that are in that jewelry store, they um, they're in business 25 years in brick. They from brick. Yeah. Yep. So I actually are felt great. good. I felt good giving mm -hmm. business Plains rather than giving nice. it to the Walmart or yeah. Yeah. someone else. No, it's good. It's good. And that's what we did. It we did it to help our it's local to support businesses. the local businesses exactly. So more people helps everybody. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Public? Sir? Jim Cancel, Maple Leaf Park. Uh, actually, Mrs. Pontiero, I've been wrong about some things. It's not just Maple Leaf, it's all over. You're right. It's all over. I have a little grandson that's sitting there and his mother over there in Burnt Tavern Manor. And she says, the guy next to me is dealing drugs, and, but they don't have cameras, so it's, it's actually worse. No, it's all over. 638 Hillside just got busted. Good job to the Brick Police Department. They busted him. I actually have a little knowledge that this guy's been doing it a long time. Funny how my son says they always have these jolly pirate names, Pudgy, and you know, always got these. I know it's funny, right? I don't know. I'm really up here to promote a bill that's in the Senate, was kicked to the Senate. Uh, Mrs. Epic knows about it. It's uh, community, uh, Common interest, interest Community Bill A469. But what's troubled me, and the reason I came is I wrote a 12-page letter, I don't know who, on Sunday when I read an article by Daniel Nee saying that this bill was going to be opposed. There's local officials pledged to oppose this bill, and uh, Senator Christopher Connors is going to oppose this bill. Can you tell me who these local officials are? Are they, are they in this room? Any of them? Oh, he's from Fork and no, River. No, I'm just he's saying. I'm just asking. Senator I'm Connors is the state senator for Southern Ocean County. Yeah, not, I know. Not, not, in, not in this district. Right, but I mean, are, are there any local officials in this room that would oppose this bill? I mean, really? I'm asking, truly. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if any local officials are sitting I mean, here, in the audience yeah, right, right now. here. Oh. Are there any local officials that would oppose this bill? Because I want to get to, I, I looked up Mr. Connors. I looked up his financial disclosure records. Works for, a, well, he actually is a social services attorney, uh, board attorney, and he's had a contributions by, uh, yeah, Dasty, Murphy, and McGluckin. You ever heard of them? Down there in Fork River, they're moving pretty strong in the municipal, getting municipal contracts. but. You see, Mr. Mr. Connors says, um, he, he throws out a glittering generality that says, who better can run the associations uh, except the people? In other words, he's criticizing the DCA. The DCA uh, can't run associations, the people run it, but oftentimes the people don't run the association. It's a blessing and a curse. So I gotta wonder, Mr. Connors, and you could please put this, Mr. Nee, Mr. Connors, who are you talking about? Your, who's your constituents? Because this firm heavily represents real estate, managers, um, property managers, things like that. This man isn't sincere. And so I'm asking you as a board, I'm gonna fashion something. I've been in contact with officials and I've got something going. Will you back me for this bill? Think about it. Will you back me and I can, Get, get something written up because this will help everybody. 
This will help Maple Leaf. This will help Evergreen Woods. This goes to transparency it, uh, of boards. It goes to a possible recall of, of uh, board members. This is a really good bill. And it passed overwhelmingly in, so far, 71 to 40, but it's got to get through the other part of it. You guys know better than I do. And it's a hard fight. Um, I just want to give you an example of some abuse that I, I, I feel is abuse. This is a, a Ocean County public record of a lien placed on a, a unit owner in Maple Leaf. And for one month due, one month past due, it was $145. He was assessed $2,847 lien. Of this lien, he had an accelerated maintenance fee of $1,595. Late charges of $300, which I don't know if it's one, why, but here's the thing. Here's why Mr. Connors might oppose this bill. One reason Mr. Connors might, the legal fees were $657 on a one month late. And I called up our association and said, how are you able to do this? I got an email. They said, well, our bylaws say we can accelerate maintenance <coughs> fees because HOAs are a loophole that aren't subject to the Fair Debt and Credit, Credit Practices Act. They're just not. So there's a lot of money to be made by, by some people in doing this thing. And I'll bet Mr. Connors might be one of them and his, his uh, minions. So I'm asking you for your help. I'm asking you to support this bill. <coughs> Direct me. Give, me. give me help. And because I'm on my way, I've already contacted the center. I want to get a hold of Celeste Riley, who's actually pretty good looking when I look at her picture on Facebook. But uh, listen. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the bill, but if you get a copy, I'd have one right Councilwoman's here. Councilwoman Zapsik, we'll, we'll, we'll the, share I'm, that I'm with the administration if you, support, and all of us. if you will support me, this is big. Okay. This is really big. We all and it'll, it'll help for the we'll quality look. of life of, of brick. And, okay. Um, I'd like that we have to look at it, company, obviously. I'm not going to tell you the support something I haven't looked at, but that'd be great. Thank you. Thanks. Council President, might, might I address you may, address please. Mr. Do you want to wait for your council comments, or would you like to address um, it now? What, <laughs> the, uh, uh, Senator Connors is just one of five people on the Senate um, Community and Urban Affairs Committee. Um, there are, are uh, uh, the chair is uh, Jeff Van Drew. The vice chair is Ron Rice. Uh, Jennifer Beck of Monmouth County out of Red Bank is also on the committee, and Brian Stack of Jersey City. Um, so there's more than just Senator Connors' voice in that committee. Um, if you've not done so already, I would urge you to go to the um, New Jersey legislative website and sign up for the legislative alerts. But any time that bill moves, if it goes to a committee hearing or anything like that, you're going to get an email that will say, you have an alert on this bill and it will tell you when the committee hearing is and what room it is in the state house and, and anybody can go and sign up and, and speak. Um, and again, if it, gets, you know, if it gets through the committee and gets posted for a, a vote in the Senate, you'll get an email then, and an opportunity to reach out to all those. Obviously, Senator Connors is our, our more local than Jersey City or Cape May or Newark. Um, but again, when it comes up for committee, there's five people not just Senator Connors, that will listen to the testimony of uh, people that go to speak. So I would definitely urge you to do that. Thank you, Councilwoman. Ma'am? Kathy Erickson, 58 Collins Court in Breck. I live in an adult community. We have a homeowners association. I would urge this council not to support the passing of that bill. It will add layer upon layer upon layer of state rules and regulations that will be a hardship on every senior citizen and every condo owner in Brick. I'm very sorry that there are problems in Maple Leaf, but in the vast majority of adult communities, there are no problems. My community has elections every three years. People run for election, majority rules. They're elected. We have open public meetings where everyone is entitled to speak. I just went to a senior seminar the other day and there were adult uh, communities all over Ocean County represented. Nobody had the problems that they have in Maple Leaf. So I don't think we should all be punished because there are problems in one or two communities. 
work on the problems in those communities, but leave the rest of us alone. Our people cannot afford all the rules and regulations that are going to come down. Although the bill currently says that there would be no fees, yeah, that will last, what, a year, two years? Then every time we want to have an election, we have to go to the state for permission to have an election. We have an election committee, and they're appointed by the residents and by the trustees. They run very honest, straightforward elections. Most of the adult communities and most of the condos also do that. So I think this bill would be a disaster for most of the homeowners associations. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from public? See, now, Mr. Cancel, I, I, I know you want to rebuttal, but I, it, I don't, I'm not familiar. I don't know who else is not familiar with this. We'll look at it and we'll address it. Thank you. Anyone else from public? Seeing no one else? I, I know what you're going to do. Thank you. I'll close public. I'll go to, on to administration for comments. Um, I have two comments. One, I'd like to um, commend the police chief for following Mayor Ducey's initiative to all department heads last year to reduce overtime. He was able to do that to the sum of $345,000 last year, and I just thought that was worth mentioning Definitely. based on some of the discussion. And then secondly, uh, apologize for the cell phone ringing, but uh, we'll use that to, <laughs> I was getting notified that our movie in the park this evening was being uh, postponed due to the weather. So for anyone watching or in the audience, that movie is now gonna be held next Friday night. Um, same time, same place, same movie. So thank you. Thank you. Mayor? <clears throat> thank you. Um, went to a couple different events. July 10th, it was the renaming of the Brielle Bridge uh, it's now named uh, Veterans of All Wars Memorial Bridge, and it was a great ceremony um, attended by a number of brick residents. Our American Legion was very instrumental in the renaming of that bridge, and they are looking for donations for the sign, Veterans of All Wars Memorial Bridge sign. It's on each end, uh, in each direction that you're going, and uh, those checks can be made out to the American Legion and put a cover letter saying, you know, what you want that money to go towards. Uh, on July 14th, I attended the annual Garden Club Tour, which was great. Uh, a bunch of different families here in Brick opened their house um, to strangers to walk through, not their house, but their yards, opened their yards up to strangers to walk through. And it's the Yar family, the Cavanaugh's, the Kaplers, the Freshies, the Nelsons, the Myhacks, and the Clarks. And uh, I made it to only five out of those seven because it started to pour in the middle of the day. And so I didn't make it to all seven. Unfortunately, I missed two of them. Um, July 18th, Saturday, I went out to the beach to the Federation of Beaches Association meeting where the Federation of Beaches Associations is all of the beach associations. Um, they get together. I don't know if it's more than once a year. We usually get invited once a year. Um, and um, they get to, they want, you know, I did a little summary of what's going on in town, what's going on with, you know, the revetment, what's going on Route 35, the striping's done. Um, and the sidewalks issue, issues covered everything over there. And uh, thank you, Joanne Bergen was there, as well as Alyssa Cummins, and the deputy chief was there, and uh, Irene Rafferty as well. And then after I left the meeting, I went over to Brick Beach 3. I got my skin cancer screening, and I came out clear. So I'm okay until next year when I go back. As you can see, I'm sunburned right now after <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> but uh, tomorrow, my radio show, 5.30. To listen, it's www.blogtalkradio.com backslash Talking Brick Township. To call in, the call in for the talk show is 347-426-3543. Please call in because I'm by myself tomorrow. I don't have any guests um, <laughs> unless somebody up there wants to volunteer to be, be with me tomorrow. So it could be a boring show of just me speaking unless, uh, unless you, somebody calls in and asks a question. <laughs> um, this Thursday, July 23rd at 1 o'clock, the town is receiving the United States EPA Region 2 Reuse Award for our landfill redevelopment project, which is our solar field. Um, the United States EPA thought it was such a great idea that you turned a brownfield, a, a, you know, a garbage dump, into something that's actually good for sustainable, um, sustainable use in the future, which is a solar field. Um, so we are receiving an award at 1 o'clock out at, at the actual solar field. So please come out there if you can make it. And uh, there's a bunch of def different representatives from the federal government who will be there. July 24th, Friday night, 
Uh, it's the 31st annual Rotary Vest Fund Dinner dance, and it's at the uh, VFW. It features the Infernos. If anybody was at some, the last Summerfest, we all know how great the Infernos are. Now you're going to be in a cl closer, smaller um, venue. Tickets are $30, and all the proceeds purchased um, go to the police body armor, so the Bulletproof Vest Fund dance. And the Rotary does a great job. They've been doing it for 31 years, and they've uh, you know, outfitted a bunch of our police officers uh, with the uh, body vest. So thank you to the Rotary. July 25th, 8 to 12, our building department is open down the stairs. So it's 8, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Please come in if you can't make it during normal business hours and take advantage of the situation and apply for permits, get updates on your uh, different applications and inspections and all that. Tuesday, July 28th, from 4 to 7 at the Civic Center, New Jersey DCA is hosting another RREM um, LMI information session. That's for residents still in need of assistance with their applications for those two programs, their Sandy-related insurance, uh, flood insurance-related programs. And um, it's going to be one of the, probably one of the last um, sessions that they do. It's 4 to 7, and that's also combined the same night. It's a Mayor's Inn night from 6 to 7. Uh, at the Civic Plaza as well, so we're going to take part of that. And the last thing I just wanted to talk about is foreclosed properties. Uh, we do have an update on the foreclosed properties. There was 407, and the first one is about the banks that have to, you know, they're, they're foreclosed on the properties. The banks aren't taking care of the properties, so we, uh, the council passed an ordinance uh, that the banks have to register with the town and obviously also keep part, keep track and keep their properties in good shape. So there's 470 voluntarily filled out the application and signed up. Uh, 60 violations had to be written because there were 60 banks that decided, yeah, we're going to ignore, you know, your foreclosure ordinance. So 60 violations were written, and all of them uh, then registered. So we have 530 properties in town that are registered. They're bank-owned. They're foreclosed upon properties, and now they have to maintain them. So already we've written 10. Uh, failure to maintain summonses, and out of those 10, two complied. Uh, they came to court, they complied, and the other eight are still going through the court system and or they've, they've pled guilty and the, and the town has uh, done what they have to do as far as cleaning up properties. Uh, also, the property maintenance board, just so everybody knows, um, we're moving along with that. That's where these houses, they're abandoned properties, there's an abandoned list, there's over, over 300 houses on the abandoned properties list, and the abandoned properties also aren't being maintained. So we're bringing them, if, whether they're bank owned or abandoned, they're coming before the property maintenance board. And we have, uh, it has to go through a whole system. You gotta notify the neighbors, you have to notify the owner, you have to notify the last known owner, the bank, the mortgage lien holders, all these different people. They get extra time. So a complaint's made, hey, the roof is falling off of X house. Oh, they get, they get brought before the board, a board has a hearing, they get 60, 90 days, 120 days, whatever is required to fix it. And, if they, and then they get brought back again. They get more time. It's kind of drag, drags on, but we're moving forward. And we actually finally, on our next agenda, the council will have before them the first house, which is going to be demoed by the town because they didn't take care of it. It's 126 South Beverly. It's a house I went up personally, took a look at. It's in total disrepair. The roof apparently was rift, ripped off during Sandy. You got an empty pool in the backyard. You got weeds. You got, I mean, the inside of the house, it's off. You can see all the, the, the roof, uh, the ceilings are all falling down. There's absolutely no maintenance on the house at all. Um, and it's gone before our property maintenance board. Property maintenance board said, yes, this house is so bad, not being taken care of bank. We are moving towards demolition. And the way the process works, it has to go before the council. The, the, uh, the homeowner or the bank uh, gets a hearing, and it's before the council. So that'll be on our next agenda. So uh, we're moving forward with that program. We got to, the, the, I mean, these banks, these abandoned properties, we, we can't allow it. It's bringing down morale in the town. People have to live next door to a house that looks like that. It's just not fair, and we're fully committed to doing something about it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Counselor? Enough for me tonight, thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. No, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Secretary. Okay. Councilman. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, to our Boy Scouts, thank you for coming tonight and opening up our meeting. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Since our, our men and women in blue uh, is our hot, our hot topic tonight, I'd like to reach out to Chief Berkowitz. Um, ladies and gentlemen, and all of our homeowners at home down at Edison, 
I had the opportunity to ride with our police department Friday night. I wrote, uh, after, it was a four to 12 shift. Um, and I can say to you, we're busy. Um, I was, um, I received, I, I'll tell you how my day went very briefly, so I, I'll try to speed it up for you. I arrived here at Town Hall at 345 for roll call. Uh, I met Deputy Chief Ricky out the front desk. He brought me into a roll call room uh, where the men and women were uh, getting ready to hit the streets. I, uh, which under leadership of uh, Sergeant um, William Rocco, 15 minutes, they uh, gathered their things, and uh, just like in the movies, folks, um, they hit the streets. The last words were, be safe, see us on the streets, as the sergeant said. Uh, I jumped in a patrol car. I think I jumped in with uh, Officer 212. Um, I got into one of the new chargers. Um, very nice piece of apparatus. It rides very smoothly and very quick. Um, we're no longer on the street for 10 minutes. These guys, our officers, got eyes like hawks. We're going down the street. We got an officer in front of us. He spots somebody that he, realize, he recognizes. We do, uh, we turn around, we give chase. Not a speeding chase, but we turn around, we pull the, pull the subject over. Long and behold, they have warrants. Before you know it, we have, uh, we have a victim, or we have uh, a bad guy in our back seat, and the patrolman has a bad guy in his back seat. Mr. Mayor, we, um, we come to town hall. We drop off our, our, uh, bad men and women, um, that worked out extremely well. We handed it off to uh, a class one officer who filed the paperwork. We're in, the, we're in the headquarters no more than 10 minutes. Back on the street we went. With that being said, we had, uh, at that time frame, we had uh, a difficulty breathing situation. We responded to that. We had a smoke scare. We had other vehicles that were pulled over we assisted with. Around 7 o'clock, um, they transported me over to the CERT team. Now I'm going undercover, um, which is our drug enforcement team. These guys nonstop the entire night. I, we were at Maple Leaf. We were at the woods at the end of Rhode Island Drive. We were in the woods. Um, I was with them. Um, we were at Krausers. These are, all, I guess, all hot spots that different areas um, throughout the town that we're having problems with. Um, the CERT team is on top of everything that is being discussed around town. Um, what I, I'm trying to not to blow anybody's cover or anything, but um, we, um, we were on the other side of town uh, where we uh, issued a warrant. Um, these guys are in it, ladies and gentlemen. They were, you don't see it, just like in the movies. We got warrants, we're in back doors, we're in front doors. Um, we're radio communication, we got flat jackets on. These guys are doing. These men and women of our township are doing. So whatever the pay is, you know, they're, as you're home with your feet up, lounging, having a beer, having a, a social with your family, with your kids, they're out there doing. So I won't go on any further, but you know what? Um, any council members uh, and administration, if you get a chance, do a ride along. You'll be amazed of what goes our streets are like. Just like Philadelphia, where it's here. If you're looking at Camden and, and pay scales and pay raises, and it's here. We have everything under. Within one night, we, we tackled it all. I've seen everything. Um, and I thought being a firefighter, you had a rush. Chasing bad guys was even a rush, even worse. So um, I have to say to our men and women, I'd like to thank you for doing what you do every day. Um, keeping us safe, keeping our families safe. Um, you know, when you're out there and you see what they go through on every day, um, the conditions that they come across, and there's scary, scary conditions. You know, guns are drawn, whatever it may be, um, they're there. So um, I just want to let them know that, that it was a great, great experience. Hopefully I get to do it again um, and um, be safe to our men and women in blue. I thank you once again for giving me the opportunity to ride with you. Um, Summerfest is coming up uh, this week. And uh, once again, I thank you for your time and have a good evening. Thank you. Hey, Councilman, you didn't carry a gun, did you? No. Good. But I was wearing a vest. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Councilwoman. Thank you, Council President. 
Um, I would also like to thank our, our Boy Scouts for coming out tonight to lead the Pledge of Allegiance, and thank you for staying for the whole meeting. I'm very, very impressed. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, you deserve our applause. Um, just a few quick things tonight. Uh, the Brick Community, the Brick Children's Community Theater will have their um, annual musical. They are doing Mary Poppins at the Strand Theater. That's this weekend, uh, Friday night at 7.30, Saturday at 2 p.m. and 7.30. Sunday at 2 p.m. and you can call 732-920-9041 for tickets or online bcct.booktix.com. Um, then um, August 7th, 8th, and 9th, 14th, 15th, 16th, the Guild Theater Works will be doing the comedy Moon Over Buffalo and that will be at the Bob Anstett Cultural Arts Center. And if you call 732-262-1006, you can make a reservation. And then finally, the Brick Township Volunteer EMS will be holding a classic car show on Saturday, August 1st from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at their parking lot on Aurora Drive. Um, you can register to be a part of the show. It's $20 per car. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, you can call 732-948-7723. And I'd urge everyone to go out and support our volunteer EMS. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman? Thank Marshall you, Council President. Um, I'd like to thank the Boy Scouts also for coming in and doing a Pledge of Allegiance for us. Uh, I'd just like to bring everybody up to date on public works. On a commercial recycling, we have about 715 businesses in town. 144 of those businesses have been visited by the recycling coordinator so far and also 36 of those businesses went to single streams the single stream recycling so it cuts down on the dumpsters they were having a dumpster for cardboard one for bottles one for cans so our single stream is everything goes in one one container so that uh helped out with the businesses in the area so they just get one dumpster uh, that leaves 771 businesses to go to speed up the process the director is dividing up the remaining between the supervisors at DPW. So each of one of them is gonna get a little over 100. So when they have some uh, an hour or two, they're gonna to go to a business and, and try to cut this down as quickly as possible. Uh, mailers were sent out to all the commercial businesses and uh, the departments were notified about the recycling. Uh, the rigid plastic, there's 44 tons that's been picked up so far since July 13, 2015. Our residents recycling is up 6% from 72% to 78% of the residents are now recycling. So that came a long way on recycling for our town. I'm happy that everybody is participating and doing their part. Um, on construction debris day, 78 re residents brought debris to the hill. When the mayor announced that, that uh, residents can bring for one day construction debris, uh, 78 people showed up. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who participated in helping the Brick Township and to keep it clean. Um, just a FEMA advisory. I believe the mayor mentioned this just before. The last day to submit Hurricane Sandy claims for review is set for September 15, 2015 by FEMA. This is the applicants. You must uh, please register by that date. To be eligible for review, policies must be must have experienced flood damage between October 27th, 2012 and November 6, 2012 as a result of Hurricane Sandy. Uh, policy holders can call the uh, NFIP's Hurricane Sandy Claim Center at 1-866-33-74262 to request a review. Uh, on Tuesday, July 28, 2015, the REM information session for Sandy victims will be held at the Civic Plaza from 4 to 7. Um, events that I went to, I, uh, the last one was uh, the garden tour. Enjoyed very much. It was beautiful gardens displayed. I made it through all seven, even with the rain. I carried it. My wife and I had umbrellas. We were just looking at the flowers that way. Um, also, uh, I attended Summerfest last Thursday, which was great. The Infernos were there. It was a very good time. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone, and please stay hydrated. It's very hot out there, seniors especially. And thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. 
Um, I'm not going to repeat what's been said already except to thank again the Boy Scouts and thank our, our lone Eagle Scout to be for sticking it out through this entire budget presentation, all of the agenda. That just shows your dedication and your will to, to actually learn something while you're here. So it's something that not a lot of people do, so I do want to recognize that. I do also want to um, indicate that I do serve on the board of directors of Harbor House along with Sheriff Mastronardi. We have asked Harbor House, uh, who hones in on homeless and abused youth, to come into some of our areas where um, there is believed to be homeless and abused youth and to do some pass-throughs is what they call them and, and look for these youth. I do understand that at least two children have been helped by the circumstance. It's not just for Maple Leaf, it's for all of the communities and um, it is at least two children have gotten help so far so I'm thrilled with that process and we're going to continue with that. Um, as to the Mary Poppins, the Brick Children's Community Theater is a wonderful organization and I heard that the play is practically perfect in every way. So if you can make it out to support these kids who have been auditioning and going through practices for months and months. That would mean so much to the children. Um, last, I, and I, I heard um, Councilman Moore talk about the ride ride with, what do you call it? Ride along. Ride along. I, I am a liability to take on a ride along. I'm not going on a ride along. But what I can talk about is the conditions that our, our police work in, um, in, in this building. Um, and I can tell you that I looked through that budget um, looking for, did they look for renovations? Did they want to see improvements? These guys are dealing with locker rooms that have tiles that are chipped. Um, and, and that's putting it mildly. Close, close quarters, closets used as offices. And these are, the, these are the conditions that these gentlemen and females are working in. Um, and I do want to take a moment to recognize that you didn't ask for any of those things to be repaired. You focused on what we actually needed was this, which was cutting down that OT and these these gentlemen and ladies are sucking it up and working in conditions which if you saw them you would be very very surprised so I continue to endorse the work of our fine men and women in blue uh, and hope that everyone appreciates what we have in our town which is very special from a lot of towns which is officers who are dedicated not just doing their job but going be above and beyond and helping others. The last thing I wanted to talk about this evening is tonight is my son Antonio's eighth birthday and I was faced with a very difficult um, task of telling my son that I would not be able to celebrate his birthday dinner with him and um, it was probably one of the most tearing moments I've had as a mother uh, but I explained to him that, first of all, I will celebrate all week your birthday. We will celebrate it. We will go to Music Man tomorrow. We'll go everywhere you want to go. We'll celebrate it. But I made a commitment to our town to try to make things better. And it's just because it's your birthday today. There's a lot of people whose birthdays are today that live in our town. And you want mommy to go and help these people. Remember you helped me with the campaign? Yes. Okay, so then you have to understand that your birthday is not as important as making sure everybody in the town is safe, happy, and has what they need to keep going. So it, it's a lesson for my son. Um, it was a really hard lesson for me to teach, but I think that each and every member of our council and our mayor and our administration, all of our staff, everyone is so committed to our town that we put all these, everything in priority and the town comes first. So when you take a position to serve in this manner, it's just important that you put the town first and I think that everyone has done that so again thank you all for coming out tonight and listening to the presentation this budget um, I think is a wonderful budget I'm very happy with uh, Mayor Ducey's long-term planning here it's going to in the future save us thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars I am I am so in awe at the work done by our business administrator Scott Bazaris to streamline this budget down in a way that we still can have parks being renovated, Summerfest being held for free, all the things that we as brick residents enjoy and have come expect to enjoy without losing those things. We're still have, we have a budget that hasn't gone up 24%. We have a budget that's streamlined now. And I want to take the time to thank 
all the people for all their hard work on it because this has been just a matter of chopping down, chopping down, chopping down all of the fat. There is there more to be done, yes, and in future years I'm hopeful that we can all work together to make that happen for our town so our town can get better and better. Thank you for coming tonight and have a great, great week. Thank you, Councilor Warren. Vice President. Yes. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Mr. Coyle for bringing up our Buy and Brook program. We still have our cards available. If you are interested, you can just call uh, Town Hall Administration. We can send it out to you. It's very, very simple instructions to get registered online. Um, and like you know, Council President uh, saved over $200 on his property taxes this year. So you can see Security. how much of an impact. Uh, that it can make um, on our personal finances. Um, I just want to remind everybody, I know a couple people have said we do have our Summerfest Thursday night. We have the Time Machine uh, coming out and it's been, I wasn't able to go to the last one, but I hope this one is as nice weather as the last one is what I heard. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to that. Also Saturday is our farmer's market. Um, we've been, I know it's been very, uh, everybody has been going to it. It's a community event. We want everybody in our surrounding area to use the farmer's market. It's what it's there for. Um, and also, I also want to commend the mayor uh, for his debt reduction plan and the capital budget that and the capital program that he has put in place to get all of our parks done. And not only is he getting the parks done, but he's making sure that the different parts of the town are each getting their fair share. We have Colorado Park, we have uh, Angela Hibbard Park, and we have Lake Riviera, just making sure that we spread out the wealth of um, our community parks. Um, and with that, um, thank you very much. Have a great thank evening. Thank you, Vice President. I'd like to also thank Troop 16 and 17. Caught you in the audience, got you up here, thank you. Um, happy birthday to Antonio. Thanks for letting yeah. mom come out to the meeting tonight. Uh, REM money is out there for people affected by Sandy. People are getting money, but be careful on choosing your contractor that's working on your homes. I'm hearing a, a, a lot of horror stories where uh, contractors are taking money and not doing the work that needs to get done on the house and even telling people they ran out of money. So be careful with that. I was also at the, the bridge dedication. That's the bridge from Brielle to Point Pleasant. Uh, great morning, a little warm, but it was nice. The garden tour went on last week. It was a great day. I made it to all seven houses, but. I was a little damp because I did not have an umbrella, <laughs> and it definitely rained uh, quite hard. Uh, August 4th is Kids' Night Out at Windward Beach. What are the hours from that, 7, 6? Six? 6. 6, 6 o'clock, 6, 6 p.m., so August 4th, Kids' Night Out, Windward Beach. August 30th is a car show at Windward Beach, Thursday to 30th. July 30th. Uh, sorry, July 30th, excuse me, I wrote August. July 30th, so that will be next uh, following Thursday. Um, our next meeting is August 11th at 7 p.m. I'd like a motion and a second to adjourn. Can I just make one more thing you I forgot sure to mention? Can. I'm so sorry. I just wanted to mention that this week is uh, Sean Kenevy's 36th year anniversary oh here at the township. He, Sean is our zoning official. Mayor and I took him out for a special uh, celebration today, but I wanted to congratulate and say thank you so much for Sean sure. for 36 years of service. He's a delight and he's years. doing a fantastic job, and we're just so happy. Considering that he's only 38 years old, <laughs> I know. Is, <laughs> that's amazing. He's, he looks great, too, right? All right, thank you. Motion and a second? Motion. Second. Motion. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye.